The LogoPress Die Design Manager, also known as 123Go, is a free SOLIDWORKS Gold certified product that allows someone who does not have LogoPress Die Design software installed on their computer to make updates to and to work within a LogoPress Die Design. LogoPress Die Design Manager is installed, but as you can see, LogoPress is unchecked in the SOLIDWORKS add-ins. Even though it is not turned on, the LogoPress specific features, which can be found in the reference part of LogoPress strip layout, such as station marks and LogoPress unbending features. If I do a control Q rebuild, we can see that these features are still recognized, even though the add-in is turned off. Another example of a LogoPress specific feature would be found in the annex part of the strip assembly, such as this import feature, which imports the body files from the station marks. And if I do a control Q rebuild, you can see that this feature also will update properly. Now, if I go to the SOLIDWORKS add-ins and turn on the LogoPress add-in, we can see now the LogoPress is available in the Command Manager and in the Tools pull-down list. If I go to Command Manager, we have additional tools that are available to help within this LogoPress design. One of those is the LogoPress filters, which allows us to switch between these sub-assemblies, which are the upper, middle, lower, and the strip layout assembly. So if I click on the one that says lower part, we are looking at the lower. I can also toggle the strip assembly to be hidden or shown. I can also look at the middle, the upper, or any combination of these sub-assemblies. Another tool would be the LogoPress assembly color slash transparency. This is useful if you are doing a review or if yourself do not want to see the transparency, you can easily change the transparency to opaque by sliding these sliders over to the left so that they are set to zero. And then when I change the filters, you can see that everything is opaque. If I click OK, this will remain opaque, or if I cancel out, it will return to its transparency. Another tool is this one right here called Normal 2 Without Zooming Out. And this is useful if I'm zoomed in like this and I click this top face and say I want to be normal to that face. I'll just use a keyboard shortcut. You can see it is normal to, but it zooms way out to the extents. But with this option, normal to without zooming out, it goes normal to that face I had selected, but uh, does not zoom out to the extents. Another tool called update the stations. And this is useful when making a change to the part within the strip. I will now open up the strip assembly. And let's say I want to make a change to the part. Let's say I want to center this bent leg on the part. Then we have to use the method outlined to make changes within a LogoPress strip assembly. This is documented in a PDF file and in multiple videos. 
So to make this change, we have to open up the reference part. We can find this in the feature tree of the strip assembly. This is this one right here. This one that has four strip in the name is the annex part. That's what we're seeing in the strip. But this part, the reference part, I'll open it up. And this has the station marks. And this is where the change has to be made. So I'm going to roll up just above the first station mark in the tree. And the best method is to use SOLIDWORKS Direct Editing Tools to make this change. So I am going to select Move Face. And this is just a SOLIDWORKS tip. If I change the display style, the hidden line is visible. I can window around the faces I want to select. I can get both sides of the part. Then I'll change it back to shade with edges. And I'll drag this Z direction in the direction I want to go. And then change the distance to where I need it to be. Click OK. And those faces will move to the new location. But no new geometry is created. I just move the existing geometry. Roll down to the bottom of the feature tree and all the other features will update. I'll save and go back to the strip assembly. And you can see here that the leg has not moved yet. This is where this update the stations of the annex part used in the strip function comes in. While in the strip assembly, I'll just click on this icon. It'll ask me if you want to rebuild the reference part. Yes. You know, import the new updated bodies into the annex part, which is the part that is patterned within the strip. Everything updates, including the cutting punch. And you can see this uh, lance form punch also updated to the new location. This form punch did not update, but it's easy to correct its location. You either can click on it and edit the sketch or just double click on it and the sketch will appear. And I'll change this value and that has updated. I'll save the strip and when I return to the tool You can see that the die opening has updated. Lance tab location is updated along with the bent leg. If I look in the, at the stripper plate, the openings have updated in the stripper plate. And also if I look at the upper, we can see the locations have updated there also. But we can also see there is an error in the tree in the punch retainer part. So I will open that up. And there's an error in the sketch. If I were to edit this sketch, that's the reference for the opening. Edit that sketch, ignore that error. And we can see that we have these extra circles in here and that's what's causing the error. LogoPress is analyzing the shape of the punch where it intersects the plate. And when this punch was first mounted, these openings in the punch were not there. These are openings for the mounting screws and the ejector pins. But it's easy to fix. These entities that are red, I cannot select it. You can see I cannot select it. But if I do a selection window, something like this, we can see I can capture those circles. I will also select these two and hit delete, exit the sketch, ignore again, and you can see the error is gone. Very easy fix. I'll do the same thing on this sketch. Window around these two circles that we do not need delete and exit the sketch 
and the errors are corrected. I'll save this, return back to the tool assembly. Collapse, show the rest of the tool, and we do not have any errors. Next, I will show functionality that if I also register and request a license for the die design manager, I can also run die debugger on a tool that someone that does have the die design software has set up the motion simulation. We can run die debugger. There is a section called strokes. If I expand it, they are already set. Right here, we can set our strokes per minute and then select play. And we can simulate the motion of the press cycle. Including on this particular design, if I look at the lower and hide the strip, we can see the lifters are also moving. That motion was already pre-set up. I'll select stop and check OK on Die Debugger. And the last function that I'm going to show is that with LogoPress 1 through 3 Go Lite, we are also able to add some of the basic fasteners and dowel pins. I'll select the lower assembly, and I'll add a couple of screws to this form insert. I'll hide the strip. Select LogoPress 1 through 3 Go Lite, and you can see we have dowel pins and the basic fasteners including a shoulder bolt. I'll select socket head cap screw. First thing it asks for is the screw head plate. That's where the head of the screw would be. I'll select the top of this form insert. Then focus drops down to the tapped hole screw plate, which will be the die shoe. We get a preview of the screw. We can change suppliers. I'll just use generic inch and sizes. I'll click OK. And then you can see it puts me into a sketch and makes me normal to that sketch. And I just have to place solid sketch points where I would like the screws. LogoPress does provide some patterning tools within the design manager. I'll select position by two edges, set the distance from the edges that I would like it to go in at, select the edges to the corresponding dimensions. And you can see it places a point with the dimensions, quick and easy. Click OK. These are just sketch points with dimensions. I can change a dimension if I would like to. Exit the sketch. and the holes are created in the corresponding plates and the components are inserted. If I would like to edit these screws, I can either select the corresponding hole or the screw itself, and then go to logo press one, two, three, go light again, and puts me into edit mode. And I can change, let's say the size I can also select one of the plates in the list here in the property manager, and I can change the values, the size values of that particular hole. If I select the tap hole plate, here's the tap hole. I can also change the hole type. If I want that to be a through drill. And then once I click OK, it puts me back into the sketch. I could make changes to the locations but I will just exit the positioning sketch. The old components and holes are removed and new components are inserted.
So as you can see, using LogoPress Design Manager, you can easily work within a LogoPress die design and also make updates.